Today is July 23rd, 2025, and you're listening to Space News First Up. Discover your next mission in the space industry with the Space News Job Exchange. Visit spacenews.com jobs to find top aerospace roles and connect with leading employers. And for employers, use discount code J-O-B-E-X for 15% off your next purchase. Here are today's top headlines in space. The general now in charge of the Golden Dome Missile Defense System says he will have an architecture for it ready in 60 days. The administration is looking to expand the companies involved in Golden Dome to reduce reliance on SpaceX. A key Senate appropriator wants to expedite passage of a spending bill that includes NASA. The development of a Space Development Agency satellite constellation is at a make-or-break moment. The Space Force plans to select several companies to develop surveillance satellites in geostationary orbit. AST Space Mobile is seeking regulatory approval to provide direct-to-smartphone satellite connectivity for first responders in the United States. And the global space economy hit a new record high in 2024. First Up is produced by Space News, the industry standard for professional space journalism. Visit spacenews.com for breaking news, policy updates, and original analysis. We begin today with news that the general now in charge of the Golden Dome Missile Defense System says he will have an architecture for it ready in 60 days. Speaking at a Space Foundation conference Tuesday, General Michael Getlin said he's been instructed to provide in 60 days an objective architecture or an initial end-to-end -end blueprint for how satellites, sensors, interceptors, command networks, and other components will integrate into a unified missile shield. He said he will work to bring together existing missile defense projects into that integrated architecture, along with new technologies like space-based missile interceptors. Gitlin was confirmed by the Senate last week to lead Golden Dome and reports directly to Deputy Secretary of Defense Steve Feinberg, bypassing traditional chains of command. Reuters reports that the administration is looking to expand the companies involved in Golden Dome to reduce reliance on SpaceX. Officials have reached out to companies like Amazon, Rocket Lab, and Stokespace about participating in the effort. That outreach is intended, officials said, to reduce the role SpaceX would play, which stems from the falling out between President Trump and Elon Musk. SpaceX, though, would likely still have a significant role given its capabilities in launch and satellites. Musk noted on social media that federal acquisition regulations require using the best companies and best prices. Anything else would be breaking the law. A key Senate appropriator wants to expedite passage of a spending bill that includes NASA. Speaking at the Space Foundation Conference Tuesday, Senator Jerry Moran, Republican Kansas, who chairs the appropriation subcommittee that funds NASA, says he wants to attach his subcommittee's spending bill, approved by the full committee last week, to the Milcon VA appropriations bill that the full Senate plans to take up soon. Several other appropriations bills might also be added to that legislation, which he said is intended to address concerns the overall appropriations process may deteriorate over time this fall. Moran also called for the White House to select a new NASA administrator nominee, arguing having Sean Duffy serve as both acting NASA administrator and Secretary of Transportation is too heavy of a workload. The development of a Space Development Agency, SDA, satellite constellation is at a make-or-break moment. Major General Stephen Purdy, the Acting Assistant Secretary of the Air Force for Space Acquisition and Integration, said the first of several Tranche 1 launches of the SDA's proliferated warfighter space architecture constellation is expected within the next month. Tranche 1 includes 126 transport layer communication satellites and 28 tracking layer satellites for missile warning and tracking. Purdy said the Tranche 1 satellites will be deployed in monthly launches over the next year. The Space Force plans to select several companies to develop surveillance satellites in geostationary orbit. Purdy said the service will go with multiple companies to produce satellites to replace the current Geosynchronous Space Situational Awareness Program constellation built by Northrop Grumman. The new procurement, named Geosynchronous Reconnaissance and Surveillance Constellation, or RGXX, represents the Space Force's transition to a satellite acquisition model that leverages commercial technologies from the private sector. 
the new systems used to monitor other spacecraft in GEO will rely on large numbers of smaller, less expensive spacecraft. AST Space Mobile is seeking regulatory approval to provide direct-to-smartphone satellite connectivity for first responders in the United States. The company filed a request with the FCC to provide those services using Band 14 frequencies via AT&T's government-backed FirstNet program to enable connectivity in areas without terrestrial coverage. The FCC is expected to put both filings, along with other AST Space Mobile applications related to supplemental coverage from space, out for public notice prior to any decision. The global space economy hit a new record high in 2024. Heather Pringle, CEO of the Space Foundation, announced that the global space economy, including all commercial and government activity, was valued at $613 billion in 2024. That is an increase of 7.8% from 2023, she said and puts the space economy on a pace to reach $1 trillion by 2032. Share your company's news with the entire space industry through Stellar Dispatch, the press release service from Space News. Learn more and use discount code SD2106 for 15% off when you submit yours at spacenews.com slash Stellar Dispatch. In other news, SpaceX launched a pair of SES satellites Tuesday afternoon, one day after a last-minute scrub. A Falcon 9 lifted off from Cape Canaveral, Florida at 5.12 p.m. Eastern. It deployed two O3 BM power satellites for SES into medium Earth orbits. A launch attempt Monday was called off less than 15 seconds before liftoff for an undisclosed issue. SES now has 10 O3 BM power satellites in orbit to provide broadband services. Three more Empower satellites are being built by Boeing for launch next year. Spaceflight Now reports that a power outage at an FAA center scrubbed another Falcon 9 launch from California. SpaceX called off the Falcon 9 launch of NASA's Tracers mission, along with several other small satellites, less than a minute before launch Tuesday, citing airspace concerns from the FAA. The agency later said a regional power outage in Santa Barbara disrupted operations at the Los Angeles Air Route Traffic Control Center, leading the FAA to withdraw permission for the launch. The launch is rescheduled for Wednesday at 2.13 p.m. Eastern. The South China Morning Post reports that a launch vehicle shortage is delaying deployment of a Chinese mega constellation. Only about 90 satellites in the Qianfan, or Thousand Sails, constellation have launched to date far short of the goal of having 648 satellites in orbit by the end of the year. The slow deployment is linked to a lack of available launch vehicles, one source said, which could affect Qianfan's ability to compete with SpaceX's Starlink as well as access to spectrum reserved for the system. ProPublica reports that the Trump administration is reportedly considering reducing environmental regulations for commercial launches. A draft of an executive order developed by the White House would direct the Secretary of Transportation to eliminate or expedite environmental reviews for launch licenses. Many in the industry have argued that such reviews have slowed approvals for licenses, but some groups warn the move could jeopardize the environment and public safety. The executive order would also call for revisions to Part 450, FAA launch licensing regulations enacted several years ago that the industry says have been difficult to implement. TechCrunch reports that Rocket Lab is looking for help to allow it to barge ahead with development of its Neutron rocket. The company is seeking permission to use a technique called kedging to allow barges to navigate shallow waters near Wallops Island, Virginia, to deliver structures for its Neutron rocket. The company has long-term plans to dredge a permanent channel for barge deliveries, but is awaiting federal approval for that work. The company says other approaches for delivering the neutron structures to wallops are not feasible. Reuters reports that New Zealand has updated its national space law to provide more oversight of ground stations. The Outer Space High Altitude Activities Amendment Bill, approved on Wednesday and which takes effect next week, will set up new oversight and safeguards for ground-based space infrastructure like tracking stations. The law was prompted by concerns from the country's intelligence service that other countries tried to set up ground stations in the country intended to assist foreign military activity that could have harmed New Zealand interests.